Alright, now we got our timing cover. Uh, it's already been a long kind of cleaning the surface up. We'll go back and uh, go back and go over it a little bit. But um, while we're in here, so this has no gasket, so you put Honda Bond or gray silicone around all these edges. Around here, each of these areas. Um, anyway, you also got a couple seals. You got this. You got your crank seal. So you definitely want to change these while you uh, while you have it apart. So let me see. This is gonna be our crank seal. This is gonna be that seal there. I'll take a little pick. Give it these uh, some O-rings. Yeah, you can tell how wow how flat and hard this is so definitely could have been a problem at some point and just replace it just make sure you orient it correctly it's that simple this was nice and round definitely gonna seal up easier so so we're gonna um change our crank seal one thing to note is try to note the depth how uh, far it's inserted because you can um, over insert these so the outside edge is pretty well flush with that inside inside edge of that aluminum lip tapping only on the seal here and it's really brittle And this probably isn't the optimal removal method, but if it works, it's not stupid. Okay, so I just cleaned everything off here. I'm gonna put our new seal in. So just want to make sure you put it in square. Like I said, just don't over insert it. So this looks like a pretty good diameter to press down on. Can need two. Go just a little bit more with it. Yeah, this smells just like Permatex Ultra Gray. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what this is. I'm, go ahead and, uh, I'm just going to... Sometimes I put it on like this, but... I'll smear it out a little bit. I don't want a whole lot of excess pushing into the... Uh, inside this case and in the... Um, in the oil area. Couple bolts here to line it up.
Okay. Next thing I do is gonna be um, put our pan on. I'm gonna flip it over real quick. And actually, I'm not even gonna show you that because it's the same exact thing as this. Then beat the silicone, bolt it up. Easy squeezy. Okay, so now that we got um, top end together, we got the timing uh, components together. Uh, what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and adjust the valves. And it's a good idea, you know, if you've done any work to it, it's a good idea to do it. Also, you know, or if you change anything, but it's regular, it's really just um just good maintenance, uh, good maintenance practices. I'd recommend um I'd probably say at least uh around a hundred thousand miles, uh do a valve adjust. Or if you get to the point where you got to change a valve cover gasket, definitely do it while you have a while you have it off. Or anytime you've got it off, it's just a good idea to go ahead and check it. On this one, we're gonna set since this is gonna be more performance oriented. We're gonna uh, kind of set everything on the um, on the tight end of the spectrum. So the first thing you want to do is um, uh, get your specs, check your specs. The whole process is going to be the same regardless of whether it's intake or exhaust, but the intake and exhaust will generally have a different spec. It's going to be the exhaust side. It's going to be the side I'm going to show you on. And uh, it's going to be the same when you do the intake. Just make sure you got the right spec. It's going to be the spec on the exhaust side is going to be within 0.25 millimeter to 0.27 or 0.01 to 0.011 uh, as far as inches go. So yeah, definitely make sure, um, definitely make sure whatever the spec is, you got the corresponding uh, gauges, whether it be exalt, uh, standard or metric. Okay, so what you're gonna need is obviously the gauges. <clears throat> you're gonna need a 10 millimeter. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver. They make a fancy tool for this, but it's not needed. So um, before you do a, a valve adjust, You want to uh, put that particular cylinder to TDC. We're doing cylinder one. We got the TDC. I already showed you how to do TDC on cylinder one. You just want to come. You'll make sure that, uh, like I said, these are loose here. Okay, so the first thing let's do is check the spec on it. So 101 is going to be tight. So you slide it between the valve and the rocker here. Wow, that's really tight actually. So. Yeah, really tight. So I can still get an 11 in there, just barely. So actually, this is really good. I'm gonna tighten it up just a tad. I'm gonna set it to where I can only get my 10 in there. It's not gonna take much. Adjust my nut was really tight. Okay, put our 10 in. Made the adjustment up. Just do a drag on it. Hold it. Torque it down. Let's check it. Okay, let's make sure our 10 can go, still go in. 10 goes in. Now let's see if the 11 goes in. Okay, now we can't get the 11 in, but we can get the uh, we can get the 10 in. So, yeah, that's what you're looking for. Um, and obviously, I mean, you know, while I go, uh, I could get the 11 in. I would check to see if I could get a 12 in. If I couldn't, then I'd still be in spec. But as long as you're in the range, you're really good. But I'm just trying to, since this is a performance application, I just really wanted to get everything um, just on the tightest spec possible. Let's check it one more time since we tighten it up. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, check this one. 
Okay. Let's see if we can get the 11 in. Okay, so we're gonna put this back. Yeah, we can get the 11 in just barely, so it's not gonna take much. Okay. And also, once you're done, uh, you wanna torque the adjustments down because there is, there is a torque spec on these as well. Our tin in there. Snug it up. So it's just about like that. A little more. If I get an 11 in. So we can't get an 11 in, so we can get a 10 in. Let me get a 10 in. Okay, so that one's where you want it. Okay, we've got a 10 in. Can't get our 11 in. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Just repeat the same on all the cylinders. Come back, do your exhaust, or you can do the exhaust. Uh, I just do intake and exhaust while I'm working on a particular cylinder. But like I said, TDC on whatever cylinder you're working on. You just make sure you got the right spec if it's uh, intake or exhaust. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Got the valves adjusted next step. It's gonna be putting our valve cover on. So we've got a new valve cover gasket. So um, valve cover gasket usually comes with the rubber uh, for the valve cover, spark plug tube seals, which are very important. And uh, they come with a new um, hardware that goes up top. So anyway, pretty simple. Just press these in where the ovens went. Here's a pretty fit, tight fit. Okay. Got them in there flush. The main thing is making sure uh, I get the cock one way or the other. Like I said, the worst part is usually getting the open valve. This is the seal for the valve cover itself. Just figure out how it orients. Okay, I think it's going to be like this. Got a dip in it. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. Just slip it down the groove. Sometimes I'll put a dab like in the track a little bit just to kind of hold the new one in there. But you got a quality gasket, it's usually not even a, a concern. Unless I'm like you're doing one sometimes you're uh, with a four cylinder you know the valve cover is right on top easy to get to if you're working on something um, where, where you're like if you're working like a V6 with a rear head you have to kind of really have to wiggle it back there and sometimes it's easy for the uh, this gasket to fall out and you won't know it. So um, in that case, I definitely put some in there just to help hold it into the valve. Let's make 
go around make sure everything is fully seated. These Del Pros are usually really good. Really good. Okay. A lot of times it's good to um, put just a dab like on the corners right here where uh, on these curves. Okay, make sure you got everything lined up. Sometimes you have to kind of have to press it um, down a little bit over these spark plug tube seals. It's going to be a kind of tight press fit. Just go around here with your finger and make sure that this seals are seated around the tubes. In our case, it look really good on it. It'll go down. See, there's a hole there around the stud. It'll slide down in that, in that hole. Yeah. So now the next thing I do is we got a lot of assembly left to do on the head, just little odd and then things we have to take off sensors and whatnot. So we're gonna get some more of that now. See, so this is our VTEC solenoid or spool valve. Pulls right here on the back of the head. Um, these are one of the really common um, oil leak areas for Hondas. Usually if you got an oil leak on a Honda, uh, first thing you usually check is this and the valve cover and they're probably both leaking at that point but anytime we got this off definitely need to go ahead and you can see how flat that o-ring is it's just like one of the other parts i showed you earlier just oh there she went take a pick and pull it out yeah you can see just how flat it is it's supposed to be nice and round also know there's a little mesh uh filter in there screen so yeah um my uh, gasket kit another reason i bought a full uh head gasket kit is because it came with all these little seals um so yeah we'll go ahead and uh it's nothing but popping a new one in we're gonna get it bolted up When I was younger and I didn't necessarily do everything right, if these gaskets got to leaking, I would just take them off and just put a bead of uh, black silicone around them. Usually that would work, but I don't want to risk getting any um, silicone into your, uh, to your oil feed. And not the right way to do it. More recently, I did have to do it on an application a few years ago because Honda did not offer that gasket separate from buying the whole valve, which is ridiculous. So in that case, I kind of had to do it because I couldn't find it at the market. But um, anyway, that's squared away. So now we're gonna get into a little bit of upgrades. This is our cooling out with um, housing, so I've got to put that on with a new gasket. But I um, just want to do away with all these unnecessary hoses. We're getting rid of this. There's that metal pipe that used to come here. Go back to the heater hoses. Don't need those. So we've got a block off for that. We've got a silicone replacement for this. Um, got a block off for this sensor that goes on top of this uh, water outlet here. I've got a block off for this. This is the um, also for the heater lines. 
I've I'm deleting everything I don't need, and then I am um, everything that I'm retaining as far as hoses, I'm going silicone. So that way we won't have any trouble with them in the future. I like to, if I gotta change something, I like to go and replace it. So, so I've also got some few other blocks off. So let's go ahead and start putting this stuff together. So as far as I know, this just kind of slides down in here. Recommend lubing that O-ring up with like some Vaseline or something. So I don't follow my own advice. So pop that in. So I think... Uh, I think this bracket just holds on and kind of holds it in. Whatever it is, it's going to be a lot better than that ugly heater pipe coming out. Next, we're going to be deleting this. It's something to do with the uh, out of air control valve on the uh, throttle body, but we don't need this and it just looks really ugly. So, we're going to delete this. Okay. It's just going to be going in the trash. Um, I could probably just fashion some kind of plug to plug this off. But, uh, but instead I opted to go just about one of these kits just because it's visually appealing and you got the option of an outlet here if you need it for like a gauge or whatever. So originally you got this. This is an outlet that runs to the heater core that we do not have. Got another block off for it. It's a plug with a crush washer and it also has the um, outlet. This will probably be the outlet that I use for my, uh, my gauge since it's at the back. Be a lot cleaner. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, there's still a few more things to do. I've still got to install a few sensors, things like that. Like I said, a few sensors, a few little odds and ends that I'm sure I missed. And um, pretty much we're ready to go. We'll throw on our intake, throttle body, you know, nothing, nothing too exciting there. Our accessories. But I'm not going to bore you with all that, you know. Um, it's nothing 
but nothing too crazy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I got, and then um, other than that, I'm still I'm still waiting on my exhaust manifold setup for my turbo setup, but I'm waiting. It's been three months now. I'm waiting. We'll see. Um, other than that, it's pretty well ready to go. I'll probably wait. I'll probably wait and throw the intake on um, once I get in the car, just so it's just easier to maneuver and I don't risk um, damaging anything. But other than that, it's pretty well ready to go in. Other than these few little odds and ends, go and put my accessories on and all that stuff. But let's check it out. Excuse the messy garage, but okay. So you got everything buttoned up. So this is the, um, the block off for that. So I will put this should be the 18 MPT. So I'll put my uh, my gauge um, outlet on there. So like I said, just got that hose, our crank pulley, and our um, idler pulley here. Put on our belt, engine mounts. This is the block off we got here. Not advertising for anybody. This is just what was available. So here, um, like I said, I bought this off, or unless I use that for something, I think I'm gonna use my the rear one for my gauge. But uh, so yeah, that really cleaned up a lot of stuff. There's a pipe that goes here and runs to the back. Um, that a lot of time you'll just loop it with this with this back fitting, but that's pretty ugly. So uh, the only other thing to do is these two will just loop these lines up under here. It'll be pretty clean. Still got to put um, a sensor here. It's a few little odds and ends, but it's looking really good. Pretty happy with it. Should be a good, um, good dependable motor. So looks good. Cleaned up pretty well. Got to get a different set of um, radiator hoses since the one, the other ones I had were modified. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Head gasket job, uh, head stud job, timing job, valve adjust, all that stuff, and definitely gonna get a new OEM thermostat. Even though that one's working fine with the car was running, but I want to go and service everything while I got it off, so we don't have any problems. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for this one. Uh, next time we, next time I do any videos on this car, it might be a while because it'll probably be. When I get my um, manifold and everything in. So, but for not, like I said, it's been three months already. I was given about two and a half month uh, time on it. So, a little over time already, but I've been waiting on to get this stuff done. So, but now we're, uh, now we're at that point where we're looking for it. Because I think um, I could go ahead and put the engine in the car, but I think I'm going to leave it out till I get that manifold set up so I can mock the turbo up um, here on the stand. And that way uh, it'd just be easier for me to um, make my oil feed and return lines. That way I can try and make everything as clean as possible. It'd just be easier for me and try and be able to tuck everything up really nice. So probably wait to put the engine in. Also, uh, I gotta clean my transmission up and put some axle seals and stuff in that while I got it out. Just trying to make everything as fresh as possible. But yeah, and clean my engine bay up. I'm clean the engine bay up. And there'll be a little bit of rewiring to do. But as far as the engine goes, we're pretty much pretty much a wrap on it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if there's anything else you want to see, let me know. Hopefully this helped you out any. And if there's anything I left out, just ask me and I'll try to fill you in. Thanks.